In this video, we'll take your components to the next level by adding variants, which will allow you to quickly and easily change elements and styles on your component when you're using them in your designs. In a previous video, we looked at creating a card component that you could use across your designs as many times as you wanted. This is massively powerful, but sometimes you want a little bit more flexibility in the components you use. This is where Figma variants come into play. Variants let you group components together in a set. These sets then have properties you can change the values of. By using a component set, you can much more easily find and use the component you need. Rather than having a load of individual components, you can have one single component that has all the properties and values you'd need across all your designs. To help illustrate this, a good example is a button. Buttons can come in many different flavors, but buttons aren't static things in UI design. You could have a hover state, a click, a disabled. You could have icon on the left or icon on the right. And you could really ramp things up by having multiple button sizes. If you needed all this flexibility in your designs, you could create multiple single components that you can use as and when you need them. But if you have multiple button styles, you have to search for each of those in Figma and remember the naming conventions so you can find what you're looking for. This can quickly and easily get really out of control. To be more efficient, you could combine all of these into a single component set. This component set could have multiple variables and properties in it. If that all sounds a bit complex, don't worry. Let's dig into creating our own component set for buttons and see how we can use that in our designs. So here I am in my design system. I've created a new page called Buttons. I've started by creating a single primary button component here. I've named this component button forward slash primary forward slash default. This gives Figma a bit of information about this component. So it's a button using the primary color and is the default state. But I'm going to need hover, click and disabled states too. So with your button selected, Click the plus icon next to the properties in the sidebar, then select variant. You can see that Figma has added a dashed outline to the button. This means that now it is part of a component set. In the sidebar, you can now see that the name of the component, button forward slash primary forward slash default has been used as properties and values. The component set itself is called button and we have properties for primary and default. To make it easier to use, let's rename these properties. The first one is the button type. So I'll rename this one. Double click here and enter type. The second property is going to be used for the state of the button, which will include default, hover, click and disabled. So let's rename this one state. Cool, so we have the foundation ready to build out a selection of different components. We will need three more variants for this primary button one for hover, one for clicked, and one for disabled. With your component set selected, click the plus icon three times to add the new variants. By default, Figma gives them all the same name. You'll notice that this causes an error in the sidebar. This is because we haven't named our button variants to match the new states we need. The error message is letting you know that there are multiple components within this set that have the same properties. Select the second button and change the state value to hover. Select the third and name the property clicked. And then select the final button and call it disabled. We'll leave the type the same for all of these as they're all in the primary button family. You'll also notice that the warning error in the sidebar has now disappeared. So we have our foundation set up, but the variants all look the same. Let's update the individual components to look more like the states they represent. I'll whiz through this now. Okay, that's better. We can test this now by dragging our new single component down into our canvas to play with the new properties. With the component selected, you can see in the sidebar the properties and the values we set up. You can now change the value for the state of this primary button quickly and easily without having to search for multiple components. All the states are now available in a single component. In a lot of projects, you're gonna need more than one button though. Let's add in our secondary button components. With the component set selected, drag out the dashed border. Select all the primary button states and copy and paste them and drag them into position. 
This will be our secondary set. So we want to rename the type to secondary to get rid of our error here. Now let's update the secondary button styles so they're different from the primary. I'll whiz through this now. If we drag our component down into the canvas, we have the option to change between primary and secondary. Plus all the states. Hover, click and disabled. You can get really creative with how you use component sets and variants. You could introduce multiple sizes for different device types such as mobile and tablet. You could introduce iconography or you could even introduce more button styles. Component sets and variants aren't limited to buttons only though. As you build out your design system library, you'll find them useful for things like select lists, check boxes, input fields, and many, many more things. By using the power of component sets and variants, you can quickly build out a robust and scalable design system that you and your teammates can use across multiple projects. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about component sets or variants, leave a comment below. I'll see you next time. Cheers.